Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Um, first off, thank you for visiting my channel and watching this video. Uh, if you enjoy what you see, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. That helps me out a great deal. Uh, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel, but make sure you watch a couple of videos before. Uh, I think there's a lot of valuable content here, and I, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from people, so I think it must be useful. So. Uh, that being said, uh, today I'm going to make uh, what I call a peekaboo band for a little citrine stone. And uh, it's a fun little style that I've had pretty good success with. The first one I think I made like 20 years ago and my wife snagged it. So uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to do that today. So, so I found a little, uh, well not little, but a, a, a good sized citrine that had a lot of fire to it. So I thought that would make a good one for this type of ring. Uh, so first thing, we'll make a bezel, but uh, before that, let's talk about the materials. I use hard solder for pretty much everything. Uh, for the bezel, I'm going to use 3 16 inch uh, fine silver bezel strip um, to create a, a platform for the stone to sit on inside of the bezel. I'll be using some 18 gauge round wire, and for the band, i got some 14 gauge sterling silver square, and that'll make up the band. So let's get started on that bezel. It's always easiest to, to find the size of the bezel for a faceted stone if you flip it up onto its top. If you want a more extensive uh, uh, video on how to make uh, step bezels, um, check out uh, right up here. I'll put a link there, and uh, you can check that out at your leisure. I get asked what kind of flux I use a lot. I use uh, something from Rio called Mighty Flux. It's been pretty good for me throughout the years. I think it was originally called Batterns Self Pickling Flux, but then Rio bought the company maybe and renamed it. That's what I guess happened. Or they allowed Rio to rebrand their stuff and sell it to sell it uh, as their own. Oh yeah, I'm doing an oval. <laughs> Did okay on the size it looks like. I cut myself a little 18 gauge wire here. make a series of rings for the stone to sit on that I'll solder to the inside of the bezel. You can also buy pre-made uh, step bezel if you prefer, or you can use some other method to create a, a ridge in there. <clears throat> so many different ways you can do things.
I think it's harder to make ovals than it is circles. Circles are... After you've bent wire for a while, it's pretty easy to make a circle freehanded. But that's a little too big still. A little bit snug. But I'd rather have it fit in there nice and tight. As I mentioned the shorts uh, uh, videos earlier, and we're experimenting with that a little bit. Is there any particular kinds of things that you guys think uh, would make for good short videos like that, with like a minute long? Um, I'm open to ideas, so if you want, leave some ideas in the comment section. I'm going to do three just to see in case I need three. To prevent the stone, uh, the pavilion of the stone sticking out of the back of the bezel while leaving it open, uh, bezel so light can get through. I'm, uh, I'm within sight of a thousand subscribers now, so if you know anybody who might be interested in the kind of stuff that I produce, feel free to share my channel's link uh, with other people. I'm kind of excited to reach a thousand. What I'm doing now is I'm just pushing those rings down so they're sitting flat, at least as far as I can get them to sit. Then I'm going to pop that stone in there and see how it sits. That's about the right level, even though the bottom ring came out. And that looks like that'll fit just perfect if I do that. That's pretty good. I think three rings is about right for this one. for this one. It's going to have like a little hole through it. This is my bezel here. I'm going to have a piece of square wire coming off of here like this. And then I'm going to have a split band. on either side that overlaps this just slightly. And comes back together for the band over here. <laughs> My asymmetrical drawing is not very good, but you get the idea. There's a, a This area in here will be see-through, so it's kind of a peekaboo hole there. But it just takes square wire to make these, plus the bezel. So, cut a couple of little short pieces of square wire here. I'm going to cut them a little bit longer than I really need so that I have plenty of room to work with. First thing I'm going to do is make the band. So to make the band I'm going to use some square wire and let's say I want to make a Oh, I don't know. Seven and a half. How about how about an eight? So let's find the size for an eight here. That's an exact eight. So this is going to become part of the band. So I can deduct that from the length. Plus I'm also going to have a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just 
just use this as the measurement here. Okay, so this distance from here to here is going to be how long a piece of wire I'm going to cut. I might add a little bit because I'm going to flare them out just slightly. Light outward bend here. It doesn't, it's pretty subtle. these guys are sitting nice and flat and I don't have to get the I'm going to be soldering in two little pieces of square wire it's likely on the floor <laughs> okay a little while ago I cut these two little short pieces of square wire and these are going to be soldered in I'll have to bend it slightly to, well I'll solder the middle first and then I'll solder these two ends in so they'll be kind of pushing in tightly. Try to make sure they're symmetrical and then I'll cut them off exactly the same length and we'll have kind of a, like a, a window through each of the sides of the band. I don't need a huge piece of solder for this. sure that these ends are pretty flat. Hard to change the shape once they're soldered in. Looks pretty square. I also want to make sure that these guys are lined up in the same plane. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to Oh, and also make sure these ends are even. If you want to, you can file a slight tape around the ends of these to make them fit even better. So just a little tiny bit of a although with this small of an area you probably could just get by with it without it. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just for giggles.
So I want to make sure I have the same distance from this end to these ends, or at least pretty close, close enough to where the eye can't tell the difference. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to solder it there and there so that those are all flush. And I should have enough solder up here to do it. sure to get those hot to try to get the solder to wick all the way through to the back side. It looks like it did. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to smooth this out a bit with the file on the inside. filed off the rough spots and any so the solder joints don't show anymore. And let's, I'm going to cut these real short. squaring off these ends because a little bit of solder might have run into the corners when I soldered those in. Try to make those all squared off. I think this side's going to be the outside, so I'm going to bend this around the mandrel. And I'm going to bend it around the mandrel smaller than the size I was shooting for. Yes. Flip it around periodically so you reduce the amount of taper you're getting. As you slide it up, you might need to So now you can see we've got our wires kind of going like that. We need to file them. The bezel is going to be going in here, like this. So we need to file these guys so that the angle matches the vertical sides of the bezel. To do that, I'm just going to do a vertical file on the inside of that little square wire part. I'm going to slide it in there and take a look at how it sits. And I'm pretty close, but I don't have the angle just right there, so I'm going to file the lower part on both of these just a little tiny bit at a steeper angle. So once you do get it sitting in there kind of how you want it, you want to look at it from up top, make sure it's centered that way. Look at it from this angle, make sure it's centered that way, not sitting too low or anything. I want the bottoms of the square wire to kind of meet up on the bottom of the bezel there, or even with the bottom of the bezel. That looks pretty good, right about like that. So I'm going to grab my third hand, and for this one, well, first off, Scrape off some of this stuff here. Just accumulated flux. Now I usually oops, I usually 
be spread open the third hand with another pair of pliers on there a little bit. In order to situate it, oops, so that neither the band nor the bezel can fall out. Okay, that looks about right. So I'm going to cut myself a little bit more solder. It's been my experience that once I get one side of this soldered, it's a good idea to take the third hand and move it around to the other side so I have better access to the other side. I used to try and reach over and do it like that. That's, sometimes can cause a disaster. Especially if an extra shaky or something. But I think I got both of those ones. So let's see. Take a look at those. I think they're soldered on there. That looks to be relatively straight. Okay, I'm going to let that pickle for a while, then I'll uh, clean it up and we'll set the stone and polish it. <clears throat> so I did a bit of cleaning with the Dremel, uh, polished the inside of the ring, um, and cleaned things up, uh, smoothed out some file marks and such. Uh, I did file the top down to about the right level for the stone. It didn't take much, it was pretty close from the get-go, so uh, looks like it's sitting in there pretty good. Okay. I usually dimple these a little across from each other so I kind of get it to not, not do too much movement. Dimple it on this end here. Make sure it's sitting flat. Dimple it on this end here. I'm trying to get it to where it stops moving at all. I can go into the in-between spaces. Now I'm starting to do more steep angle. And I push this down over the stone. So I made sure that things are kind of laying as flat as they're going to get. Then I will do a little burnishing.
you're new to this, burnishing is the last process when you're setting a stone where you're rubbing that the top edge so it's nice and symmetrical and smooth and pushed down nicely over the stone. Secures the stone in there pretty well. So that looks pretty good. Now I just need to go to the polishing wheel and give this a final polish and then it'll be ready uh, for sale. So I will do that and then show you the finished product. All right, so there's my final product. I think it came out pretty good. Let me make sure you can see that and you're in frame here. See, it's got an open bottom. It's got the little kind of peekaboo window on either side. So I think it gets kind of a classy looking ring, honestly. I should make more of these. All right, that was the Citrine Peekaboo ring, and uh, I hope that you found it valuable. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, I released a short uh, the other day for the first time and uh, I wanted to let people know that I will occasionally be releasing a short that just kind of shows a process. I think they're kind of fun uh, and entertaining so uh, look for those periodically maybe once a week and uh, again uh, I'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching uh, and leave comments if you like. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.